Thank you for joining us on Turning Point. In the studio with me is the Metropolitan of all House and Rock churches and senior pastor uh, right here at Rock Cathedral, Pastor Paul Adeolu Adifarasan. Thank you so much for joining us, Pastor. Absolutely a delight to be here, Muwa. Full disclosure at the top, uh, you are someone who knows my journey from a long ways. Uh, you were a key part of me getting to broadcasting radio, then TV. So at least now you all know. <laughs> let's, talk, you. let's talk about your turning point, because of course, what we see now is a magnificent cathedral. What we see now is a TV personality. What we see now is the uh, convener of possibly the largest gospel and prayer gathering in the world, certainly in Africa. Uh, the beginnings uh, of the journey to Jesus uh, is quite something. Tell us a bit about that. As far as values were concerned, I was born into a Christian home with, with some Christian pedigree as far as values were concerned, but I didn't have a personal experiential relationship with Jesus Christ uh, in my growing up years. And when I found liberty, when I was kicked off to school in the United States, I explored that liberty. Uh, between age 16 and age 20. And all the things that college boys do, I, I did. Uh, the sex of drugs, the rock and roll. Um, and that eventually plunged me into a terrible abyss uh, where I was forlorn. I felt uh, worried by life. I had my moments and bouts with suicide. I felt like life was no longer worth living. I felt I was a total embarrassment to my family values, uh, to my parents. My dad was the chief justice of Lagos State at the time. and. Um, I had so much condemnation sitting on me, um, and I, I felt like uh, abandoning Project Life. Let me ask you that the, the, there's a there's a story that you you've told of uh, uh, being full throttle in your in your lifestyle, which was enjoyable. But then you uh, have an encounter with your your friend. You visit the friend's home. His mother. Uh, preaches the gospel to you and it messes you up so much when you get to the nightclub you can't drink all you can order is orange juice well that's that's an amazing story for me because uh, I was home on holiday but I wasn't going to go back to uni I had made up my mind I was done with that I was going to do something else and I, my life wasn't working and I went and said to this running buddy of mine we had a little circuit that we ran including the nightclub um, that my life is, is, is abysmal now. Um, what do I do? He says, I know somebody who can fix it for you. And surprisingly, it was his mother, English woman, um, who was married to his father, Nigerian man. And she sat and preached Christ to me as Redeemer, as the forgiveness of God personified, and that he could fix my life and he could turn it around. And I was riveted to her speech uh, that evening as we sat in one of the rooms in their home and I was completely transfixed and I wanted to know more. We would normally get in the car and then drive around either smoking or drinking and then end up at the nightclub where I was DJ at a place called Deja Vu. And uh -huh. that's, that's where the music comes from. That's <laughs> part of it. <laughs> I was a party pooper myself. And um, they poured me a, a glass of lager and I, I just couldn't get the glass of lager to my mouth. It was shaking in my hands and every time I tried for a whole half hour, I just couldn't get it to my mouth. They poured a glass of orange juice and I was able to put that down instantly. And all through the evening, um, I was completely transfixed on the things that Mrs. Asabia had spoken to me about Christ. And I was eager to find answers to the questions that her talk had raised in my heart and in my consciousness. I was looking for a way out of my, my catastrophe, my calamity, my failings. Um, and I went home at four or five in the morning. And early in the morning, there was a knock on the door by a gentleman called Dr. Tunji Alakija. He had been praying for me for a year, had tried to witness to me earlier, and we got into some fisty cuffs and uh, sort of banned him from my personal presence. And I was eager, I said, please tell me about Christ because of what happened the night before in Mrs. Asabia's home. And he opened up the scriptures for nearly six hours. And I felt the love of God in such a powerful way lift the burden and the weight of condemnation and guilt off my shoulders. And I could begin to see him in my mind's eye as my, my deliverer and my savior. And in that 24 hour period, I was completely delivered from my miscreant ways, my substance abuse ways, uh, my rebellious ways that were a huge embarrassment to my family at the time. And it was very noticeable a change to my entire family. I was and meant then to I, ask. Then I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And that was 
kind of concerting for my family because they didn't understand that experience. Um, and so they'd all come and, and creep over to, to my bedroom door and listen to me kabashing in the Holy Spirit and <laughs> would go back to make a report to my late, my late father, now late, um, and say, your, your son's speaking in a, in a crazy language, you might need to talk to him. That became my opportunity to witness uh, to various aspects of my family and to share Christ in my heart with them. And the change was momentous. I went back to school, did well, eventually graduated and continued practicing. But I had this huge call on my life. And it was really quite a trial um, to manage the call and finishing off my academic career and then balancing that and my professional, professional career as an architect. So for you, the moment of accepting Jesus not only changed your life, it changed your family's life, and, and then consequently, here we are, changing the nation. Absolutely. Um, I'm not sure that were, there were 10% of the entire Adifarasi clan, or the Petgrave clan, the two lines that I've come from, my mother's and my father's side. I'm not sure there were up to 10% of them that were saved prior to my salvation. And if they had a salvation experience, it was reasonably limited. But with the advent of my salvation, it swept the family and brought revival into the family that now of my four siblings, all five of us are in ministry. Wow. And wow. that's quite remarkable. 